So in this first chapter of Betty Azar's grammar book, I'm going to go over the verb to be. So in English, the verb to be is used as a action verb. So Canada is a country. So here a country, singular, means one. Canada is a singular subject that takes the singular a verb is. Mexico is a singular subject and therefore it takes the singular verb is. Mexico is a country. So singular means one. Canada equals a singular noun. Is is a singular verb. Country is a singular noun. A frequently comes in front of singular nouns. In B, A comes in front of the singular noun country. A is called an article. A and N have the same meaning. They are both articles. A is used in front of words that begin with consonants. B, C, D, G. Examples. A bed, a cat, a dog, a friend, a car. An is used in front of words that begin with A, E, I, and O. Examples. An animal, an ear, an ear, an island, an office. So here you have some examples. A horse is an animal. English is a language. Tokyo is a city. Australia is a country. Red is a color. A dictionary is a book. A hotel is a building. A bear is an animal. A bee is an insect. An ant is an insect. So you use an in front of vowels and you use a in front of consonants. That's basically the, and it means one. So Arabic is a language. Rome is a city. A cat is an animal. Tennis is a sport. Chicago is a city. Spanish is a language. Mexico is a country. A cow is an animal. A fly is an insect. Baseball is a sport. China is a country. Russian is a language. So that's how you do A and N. Then is, if is is the singular form of to be, are is the plural form of to be. So when you have a plural subject, you have a plural verb. Cats are animals. So cats, ants, animals are all. Cats is a plural noun. Are is a plural verb. Animals is a plural noun. A cat, an animal, those that's singular. Cats, animals are plural. A and N are used only with singular nouns. So you don't say a animals or n animals. So that's not that's not possible. So you would say singular, a city, a country, then plural, cities, countries. Some singular nouns that end in y have a special plural form. They omit the y and add ies, such as cities, countries. Two nouns connected by an are followed by r. So China and Canada are countries. Dogs and cats are animals. So when you have a plural subject, you have a plural verb. This is also known as subject-verb agreement. When you have a singular noun, you have a singular verb. So here's some examples of, of this. A dictionary is a book. So if you want to put it into plural, dictionaries are books. A chicken is a bird. Chickens are birds. A rose is a flower. Roses are flowers. A carrot is a vegetable. So carrots are vegetables. A rabbit is an animal. Rabbits are animals. So that's, that's how you turn singular meaning more than one book, more than one chicken, more than one rose, more than one carrot, more than one rabbit. So if we were together as a class, we would do all of these uh, exercises together. So here you have pronoun plus be plus noun. I am a student. 
You are a student. She is a student. He is a student. It is a country. We are students. You are students. They are students. So I, you, he, she, it, we, they are all pronouns. And am, is, are are forms of be. And so Rita is in my class. She is a student. So pronoun she replaces the antecedent Rita. And so therefore, a pronoun agrees in number and gender. Tom is in my class. He is a student. Rita and Tom are in my class. They are students. So here we are students. I am a student. Rita is a student. Rita and Tom are students. You are a student or uh, you are both students. So you can, so you in English can be both singular and plural. So here you have uh, contractions with be. So we use contractions in conversational English. We do not use contractions for our academic papers because that's too conversational. I am, I'm a student. She is, she's a student. He is, he's a student. It is, it's a city. Your, you are a student. We're, we are students. There, they are students. And so when people speak, they often push two words together. A contraction, two words that are pushed together. A contract, contractions are used in both speaking and writing. Uh, the mark in the middle of a contraction is called an apostrophe. So this little punctuation mark is known as an apostrophe. So here you would have Sarah is a student. She's in my class. Jim is a student. He's in my class. I have one brother. He is 21 years old. So you would say he's 21 years old. I have two sisters. They're students. I have a dictionary. It's on my desk. I like my classmates. They're friendly. I have three books. Uh, they are on my desk. My brother is 26 years old. He's married. Actually, my brother's way older than that. He's an old fart. He's 53 years old. My sister is 21 years old. She's single. Yoki and Ally are students. They are in my class. I like my books. They are interesting. I like grammar. It is easy. Kate and I live in an apartment. They are roommates. So that's how you would put the um, contractions together. Negative with B. I am not a teacher. I'm not. So you are not a teacher. You're not, which stands for you aren't. She's not. She isn't. He's not. He isn't. It's not. It isn't. We're not. We aren't. You're not. You aren't. They're not. They aren't. I am not a teacher. You are not a teacher. She is not a teacher. He is not a teacher. It is not a city. We are not teachers. You are not teachers. They are not teachers. So be and not can be contracted. Note that I am has only one contraction with be as an a, but there are two contractions with be for b through g. So here you have I'm not, you're not, you aren't, she's not, she isn't, he's not, he isn't, it's not, it isn't, we're not, we aren't, you're not, you aren't, they're not, they aren't. So here you would have Africa isn't a city, it's a continent. Baghdad and Chicago are cities. They aren't continents. So Canada is a country. It is not a city. Jakarta is a country. It's not a city. Beijing and London are cities. They are not countries. Asia is a continent. It is not a country. Asia and South America are continents. They are not countries. So that's how you would use uh, that's how you would use not in a uh, B plus an adjective. A ball is round. So a ball is the noun. Is is B is the verb, and then 
Round is the adjective. So adjectives often follow a form of be. Adjectives often describe or give information about a noun or pronoun that comes at the beginning of a sentence. So a ball is round. Balls are round. Mary is intelligent. Mary and Tom are intelligent. I am hungry. She is young. They are happy. So when you have a subject plus the be verb plus an adjective, this is the only time in English that the adjective is going to come after the noun. Okay, so that's something to remember. I'm not sad. I'm happy. Mr. Thomas isn't rich. He is poor. My hair isn't long. It is short. My clothes aren't dirty. They are clean. Flowers are not ugly. They are pretty. Cars are not cheap. They are expensive. Airplanes are not slow. They are fast. Grammar is not difficult. It is easy. My sister is not short. She is tall. My grandparents are not young. They are old. The classroom is not quiet. It is noisy. So that's how you would use it uh, is. And this is how you would use it if, you're, if you have subject plus verb plus adjective. Fire is hot. Ice and snow are cold. A box is flat. Balls and oranges are round. Sugar is sweet. An elephant is long, while, but a mouse is short. A rainforest is wet, but a desert is dry. A joke is funny. Good health is important. Guns aren't safe. They are dangerous. A coin is small and round. A lemon is yellow. So that's, that's how you would do it. Uh, and, that, and then if we were in class, I would do more of these examples and we would practice. The table is clean. Well, here in this case, the, the, the table is dirty. The man is friendly. The little boy is sick. The coffee is hot. The algebra problem is easy. The woman is tall. The cars, the cars are old. Ken's sister is young. So here's more of uh, how you would do it. All right, B plus a place. Mary is here. Mary is at the library. In is here a place. At the library is a place. Here, there, downstairs, upstairs, inside, outside, downtown are all examples of places. Bob is at the library. Bob is on the bus, in, the, in his room, at work, next to Maria. And so a place may be a prepositional phrase. So when you have next to, at the, this is a prep at the library is a prepositional phrase that shows time and place. So anytime you have something that shows place, that's known as a preposition. On, in, next to, above, under, behind are all prepositional phrases. These are also some common prepositional, common prepositions. Above, at, behind, between, from, in next to, on, and under. So here you can practice how to use prepositional words. Uh, the cat is in the desk. The cat is under the desk. The cat is on the desk. The cat is next to the desk. The cat is on the computer. Oh, above. The cat is above the desk. The cat is behind the desk. The cat is between the desks. That's, that was fun, actually. Whenever we got pictures, that's always fun. So summary. So when we have a, when we have a be verb, you have subject plus verb plus noun. So the noun or pronoun comes at the beginning of a sentence is called a subject. So subject is always before the noun in a sentence. He is intelligent. We are in class. She is upstairs. 
So here you have three different ways in which you can have the be construction. You can have either a noun, an adjective, or a place. So you can say, I am a student, he is intelligent, or we are in class. So three different ways in which you can end a basic sentence pattern with B. Chapter 2, using B and have. And so here, is Anna a student? Anna is a student. Are they at home? They are at home. And so in a question, B comes in front of the verb. Uh, B comes in front of the subject. A question ends with a question mark. A statement ends with a period. So when you have a question, you're going to invert the subject and the verb. So in the sentence, you would say, Anna is a student. But if you're going to ask a question, you have to invert the subject and the, and the, and the, the, the verb and the subject. So is Anna a student? Are they at home? So then if you want to ask a question, you always have to invert the subject. And then if you want to answer the question, once again, you invert it back to, to subject, verb for the statement, and then for the question, verb, noun. So is Mrs. Lee a teacher? Question mark. So that is a question. Then statement. Yes, Mrs. Lee is a teacher. So here you have verb, subject, noun. And then when you have a statement, you have noun, verb, um, and object. Subject, verb, object. Yes, the sun is a ball of fire. So if you want to form a question, is the sun a ball of fire? Yes, carrots are vegetables. Are carrots vegetables? Yes, chickens are birds. Are chickens birds? So you switch the subject and the verb. Yes, Mr. Wu is here today. Is Mr. Wu here today? Yes, Sue and Mike are here today. Are Sue and Mike here today? Yes, English grammar is fun. Is English grammar fun? Yes, I am ready for the next grammar chart. Are you ready for the next grammar chart? Definitely. So short answers for yes and no. Is Anna a student? Yes, she is. No, she's not. No, she isn't. Are they at home? Yes, they are. No, they aren't. Are you ready? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. So when you have a question, you invert the subject and the verb. And so here, you have spoken contractions are not used in short answers. So it's incorrect to say, yes, she's. Incorrect to say, uh, yes, there. Or incorrect to say, yes, I'm. And so here you have to say, uh, yes, I am. No, I'm not. Are you tired? No, I'm not tired. Is Anna in your class? Yes, Anna is in my class. So that's how you would do it. Okay, so are you tired? Are you not tired? So are you a student at this school? Yes, I am a student. Are you from Mexico? No, I am not from Mexico. Are you a student? No, I am not a student. I'm a businessman. Are books expensive? Yes, they are expensive. Is a book expensive? No, they are not expensive. Questions with B using where? Is the book on the table? Are the books on the table? Yes, it is. The book is on the table. Yes, they are. The books are on the table. So here you would have, where is the book? Where are the books? On the table. The books, the book is on the table or the books are on the table. So here you would have, is Kate at home? Yes, she is. Where is Kate at home? Is Cairo in Egypt? Yes, it is. Is, uh, are the students in class today? Yes, they are. Where are the students in class? Where is uh, the post office? on Main Street. 
Uh, is the train station on Grand Avenue? Yes, it is. Is the bus stop over there? Yes, it is. Sue and Ken are at the zoo today. Or where are, where are Sue and Ken at the zoo? Where is the bus stop over there? Okay, I made a mistake for, for a second. So where is your pen? It's in my hand. Your turn now. Where is your dictionary? Where is your money? Where are your books? Where is your coat? Where is your pencil? Where is your hometown? Where are your notebooks? Where is your wallet? So you always have to have a, if you have a plural noun, you have to remember to change it to are. And if you have a singular noun, you have to remember to change it to is. Remember that singular noun goes with a singular verb. Plural noun goes with a plural verb. Have and has. I have a pen. You have a pen. She has a pen. He has a pen. It has blue ink. We have pens. You have pens. They have pens. So I, you, we, they all take have. She, he, it takes has. We have grammar books. I have a dictionary. Kate has a pen. You have a pen. Rob has a notebook. Anne and Rob have notebooks. They have pens too. Um, he has a red grammar book. I have a grammar book. It has a red cover. You and I are students. We have books on our desk. Mike has a wallet in his pocket. Sarah has a wallet in her purse. Nadia isn't in class today because she has the flu. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson has two daughters. Ducks have feathers. A duck has a beak. So those are all examples of how you use to have. So using my, your, his, her, our, and their. I have a book. My book is red. You have a book. Your book is red. She has a book. Her book is red. He has a book. His book is red. We have books. Our books are red. You have books. Your books are red. They have books. Their books are red. And so when you have the subject form I, the possessive form becomes my. You becomes your. She becomes her. He becomes his. We become our. They become their. I possess a book. I have a book. It is my book. So my, our, his, my, our, his, her, his, our, and their are called possessive pronouns and they come in front of nouns. You're next. It's my turn. She's next. It's her turn. Jane and, uh, John and Jane are next. It's their turn. My aunt is next. It's her turn. I'm next. It's my turn. The children are next. It's their turn. You and Sam are next. It's their turn. Marcos and I are next. It's our turn. Bill's next. It's his turn. Mrs. Brown is next. It's her turn. So that's how we use possessive pronouns to show something whose it is. Her zip code is 11756. Her area code is 516. Oh, you have to look here. So his zip code is um, 98301. His area code is 888. Her uh, zip code is 98301. And her area code is 8888. So his, hers. So you could practice this. So uh, you could do pair work. You could say that he has a hard hat. He has a t-shirt. He has a jacket. He has an ax. He has gloves. He has a belt. He has jeans. He has boots. She has an earring. She has a blouse. She has a sweater. She has a skirt. She has a ring. She has sandals.
I have a book. My book is interesting. Bob has a backpack. His backpack is green. You have a raincoat. Your raincoat is brown. Kate has a raincoat. Her raincoat is red. Anne and Jim are married. They have a baby. Their baby is six months old. Ken and Sue have a daughter. Their daughter is 10 years old. John and I have a son. Our son is seven years old. I have a brother. He is, um, my brother is 16. We have grammar books. Our grammar books are red. Tom and you have backpacks. Our, uh, your backpacks are brown. Anne has a dictionary. Her dictionary is red. Mike has a car. His car is blue. So this is how we use possessive pronouns. Using this and that. So I have a book in my hand. This book is red. And so this book is the book that is near me. I see a book on your desk. That book is blue. So that book is not near me. So this is my book. That is my book. That's her book. Uh, this is her book. In spoken English, this is is usually pronounced. We don't usually say this is a sis simply because of this is this is this. So that's why people say this is. So here you have this is a book, that is a book. This is a pen, that is a pencil. This, oh, that is a notebook, this is her notebook. This is my dictionary, that is your dictionary. So every time the object is close to you, you use this. If the object is far away from you, you use that. So basically it's just teaching you this and that. So this is something close to you, that is something far away from you. And that's all that, that, that there is. And they're all, these are also known as demonstrative pronouns, singular demonstrative pronouns, when you use it in front of singular nouns. Then if you have an, several objects close or far away from you, if you have several objects that are close to you, you would say these. And if you have several objects that are far away from you, you say those. So you would say, these are my books. Those are your pencils. Those are his boots. These are her shoes. So these, oh, those are your hats. These are their jackets. So anytime it's something nearby, we say these. And if it's something far away, we say those. So these and those. Asking questions with what and who. What is? Who is? What is that thing? Who is that man? What are those things? Who are they? What's this? Who's that man? What is this thing? It's a pen. Who is that man? That's Mr. Lee. What are those things? They're, they, they're pens. Who are they? They're Mr. and Mrs. Lee. So what asks about things? Who? asks about people. And so in questions with what and who, uh, you have is followed by a singular word and are followed by a plural word. So what are those things? So what is used with things? Who is used with people? And what is, did I just say that right? What, yeah, what is used with things? Who is used with people? So what is this? Who is that man? So he would, he would say, what are those things? Who is that? That's Mrs. Walensky. What is this? That's my new notebook. Look at those people over there. Who are they? What is your name? Anita. Who is your grammar teacher? Mr. Cook. Who are your favorite teachers? Mr. Cook and Mrs. Rosenberg. What what is a rabbit? It's a small furry animal. What are bats? They're animals. So if you're using animals, you could still say what is, what are. So animals are considered things. Okay, so you could say what is a bat? What is a rabbit? Only when you talk about people do we use who. So what is also animals and things.
And these are all, that's all chapter review. So you could do all of this chapter review to make sure that you, you understand the chapter. And then the answers are at the end of the, the, the answers are at the end of the book using present tense, simple present. So if we are talking about something that's happening today, that's known as the simple present. So if you have a closed, completed action that's happening today, and it's an action that happens as a habit every day, that is the simple present. So I talk, we talk, you talk, uh, she talks, they talk, he talks, it rains. So the verb after she, he, and it has a final S. I eat breakfast every morning. Olga speaks English every day. We sleep every night. They go to the beach every weekend. So the simple present ex expresses habits. Eating breakfast is a habit, a usual activity. Every day, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, we eat breakfast. So something that happens all the time as a habit is used as a simple present. So every day she wakes up at 7 a.m. Every day he shaves or every morning he shaves. So that's all examples of present tense. Every day I go to class. Every day I put on my clothes. Every day Robert shaves. Every day uh, Sharon puts on her makeup. Every day, John takes a shower. So something that happens, or habits, that's every day is the simple present. My mother and father eats breakfast at seven every day. My mother drinks tea uh, every, uh, with her breakfast. I take a bath every morning. My sister takes a shower. I study English with my friends. We walk to school together every morning. Class begins at 9 every day. Uh, it stops at 12 o'clock. We eat in the cafeteria. My friends and I go home at 3 o'clock every afternoon. For me, every day I watched um, the Jetsons. Okay, that's past tense. Every day I teach English. Every day I correct papers. So that is a habit something that I do every day as an English teacher. And so using frequency adverbs. So that means how often does something happen? So here, I never eat paper. So that means never, something that never happens. Always means something that happens all the time. Bob always eats breakfast. So here you're talking about how often something happens. So here, sometimes I watch TV. Oh, I so as you go down this way, it's, it gets less and less often. So, Mary usually eats breakfast. They often watch TV. Tom sometimes watches TV. I seldom watch TV. That means it's going down. I, I almost never watch TV. I rarely drink a milk. I never eat paper. So the words in this list are called frequency adverbs. They come between the subject and the simple present and they tell us how often something takes place. Anne always drinks tea. Bob, most of the time, drinks tea. Mary sometimes drinks tea. Gary almost never drinks tea. Allie seldom drinks tea. Joe never drinks tea. So that's basically, it just tells you how often something happens. So I never eat carrots for breakfast. I seldom watch TV in the morning. I sometimes have tea with dinner. Sonia usually eats lunch in the cafeteria. Joe rarely drinks tea. We often listen to music after dinner. The students often sp always speak English in the classroom. Because if you don't speak English in the classroom, you can't learn the language. I drink tea once a day. So here are some more frequency expressions. I drink tea once a day. I drink tea twice a day. I drink tea three times a day. I drink tea four times a day. 
I drink tea. So I see my grandparents three times a week. I see my aunt once a month. I see my cousin, Sam, twice a year. I see my roommate every morning. I pay my bills every month. I see my doctor every year. And so we can express frequency by saying how many times something happens a day, a week, a month, a year. Every is singular. The noun that follows is, must also be singular. So you can't say every mornings. You always have to say every morning. You can't say every months. Okay, you have to say every month. So here, every day, Hamid takes the bus. Once a week, Anna takes the bus. Twice a week, Yoko takes the bus. Every day, Marco, oh no, it's not every day. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six times a day, six times a week, Marco takes a bus. One, two, three, four, five. Five times a week, Joe takes a bus. Uh, Mr. Wu never takes the bus. Mrs. Cook takes the bus one, two, three times a week. So you can talk about how often you do something by counting how many times a week or a day that you do something. Frequency. Um, Tom is always late for class. Tom is usually late for class. Tom is often late for class. Tom is seldom late for class. Tom is rarely late for class. Tom is never late for class. So once again, these are all frequency verbs that tell you how often something happens. Frequency adverbs, am, is, are, follow the simple, uh, are used with the to be verb. And so that's basically, I eat, I always eat dinner. I usually eat dinner. I never eat dinner. Actually, I never go to a movie. I always go shopping. I seldom go swimming. I sometimes spend time with my friends. I am rarely at home. I often listen to music. I always watch videos. I always speak English. I always send emails. I always surf the, the, the internet. I never drink coffee after 9 p.m. I am always in bed at 10 o'clock and I sometimes go to bed late. So this just tells you how often something happens. And then spelling and pronunciation. So push is pronounced as pushes, teach, teaches, kiss, kisses, fix, fixes. So when you have this kind of pronunciation, that's the sh pushes, teach, ch teaches, kiss, s kisses, and X, Z, fixes. So that's the different pronunciation based on how something is spelled. Teaches, fixes, watches. Brushes, washes. Adding E, adding S and ES. So if your, if the word ends in Y, so some words that end in Y, then if you're gonna make it plural, it becomes IES. And this is very irregular. You simply have to memorize how it's done. So I try, he tries. We study, she studies. They say, it says. You worry, my mother worries. We fly, a bird flies. I stay awake, Paul stays awake. I enjoy games, Anne enjoys games. Student buys, students buy books, my brother, buys books. We pay bills. Gina pays bills. I play music. My friend p plays music. So you have to add an S for a third person case. And so here, I have a book. He has a book. And then you would say has. Okay. So have, do, and go have irregular forms for third person singular. Have becomes has do become does, go become goes. So I do my homework, she does her homework. They go to school, she goes to school. I have a book, he has a book. 
So third person case is it's irregular. So third person case means when you're talking about someone else, you're not talking about yourself. So when you talk about other people, then this verb becomes irregular. We always do homework. Yoko and Ami have their books. Um, Mrs. Uh, Chang has a car. Andy goes to school every day. Je Jessica has a snack. Sarah seldom does her homework. We do exercises in class every day. Roberto goes downtown every weekend. He and his wife go shopping. My friends often go to the beach. And this is a listening. And here you have more spelling that rules that you have to memorize. There's no rhyme or reason. That's what makes English uh, so complicated because some of the rules you just have to memorize. Rub becomes rubs. Ride, rides. Smile, smiles. Uh, in pronunciation. Dream, dreams. Run, runs. Wear, wears. Drive, drives. See, sees. Snow, snows. Then it becomes drinks, sleeps, writes, and laughs. Why is that? I have no idea why the British did that. So this is just the way English has evolved. I guess that's the best answer I can give is that, that the, a language is like, it's organic and therefore it evolves organically with no rhyme or reason. It just does. Pushes, pushes, teaches, teaches, kisses, kisses, fixes, fix, fixes, cries, cries, uh, study, studies, pay, pays, buy, buys, have, has, go, goes, do, does. So hopefully I give you the rub, rubs, ride, rides, smile, smiles, dream, dreams, run, runs, wear, wears. So you just add a Z for all of these words. Drink, drinks, sleep, sleeps, write, writes, laugh, laughs. So here you add like a s sound, and here you add a z, z sound, and then here it's uz, uz, pushes, uz, uz, teach, uz, kisses, uz, fix, uz. Okay, so you have a, z, a, z, a, z. And then here it's just a z, cries, studies. No, a, uh, z. You don't say cry, a, uh, z. You just say cries, z. It's just a z. All of these going all the way down just becomes z, cries, studies, z, pays, buys has, goes, does. So those are all irregular verbs and you simply have to memorize it. Even for native speakers, native speakers have to memorize this also. Um, simple present in the negative. I do not drink coffee. We do not drink coffee. You do not drink coffee. They do not drink coffee. She does not drink coffee. He does not drink coffee. Uh, it does not drink coffee. And so here in the negative, do and does are called helping verbs. Notice in B, in the third person singular, there is no S on the main verb. The final S is part of does. So you, it's incorrect to say, she does not drinks coffee. People usually use contractions when they speak. And, and people often use contractions when they write. Do not becomes don't does not becomes doesn't. I don't drink tea. They don't have a car. He doesn't drink tea. Mary doesn't have a car. So o Omar does not have a car, ha have a cat. He has a dog. I drink coffee. I don't drink tea. I live in an apartment. I don't live in a house. Uh, Becky drives uh, an old car, not a new car. Uh, I play tennis. I don't play soccer. Mr. D Mr. Davis teaches English. Mr. Davis does not teach French. 
So that's how you would use uh, not in a sentence. The simple present with questions. Do I like coffee? So remember, in a, in a question, you invert the subject and the, um, the verb. So instead of saying, I do like coffee, if you're asking a question, you invert it and say, do I like coffee? Do you like coffee? Do we like coffee? Do they like coffee? Does she like coffee? Does he like coffee? Does it taste good? Do I, do you, do we, do they? Does she, does he, does it? The main verb in the question does not have a final S. The final S is part of does. Does she likes coffee is incorrect. So you have to say, does she like coffee? You gotta take away the S. Are you a student? So you can't say, do you be a student? When the main verb is a form of to be, or do is not used. So here you would say, do you like coffee? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Does Bob like tea? Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Do, do don't, does, and doesn't are used in the short answers to yes and no questions in the present, in the simple present. Do you like tea? Yes, I do. Do you like coffee? No, I don't. Do you speak Chinese? No, I don't. Do you speak, does, uh, does Anne speak Italian? Yes, she does. Do Anne and Tom speak Arabic? No, they don't. Do they do exercise, do I do exercises every morning? Yes, I do. Does Sue have a cold? Yes, she does. Does Jim do his homework every day? Yes, he does. Does it rain a lot in April? Yes, it does. Do frogs have tails? No, they don't. So that's how you do the yes, they do, and no, they don't. Okay. The simple present asking information. Do they live in Miami? Yes, they do. No, they don't. Where do they live? In Miami. Does Gina live at Rome? Live in Rome? Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. Where does Gina live in Rome? So you can have a yes, no uh, question, an information question. Where asks for information about a place? The form of yes, no questions and information questions is the same. Do, you got the verb first, the subject, and then the main verb. The helping verb, the subject, and the main verb. So here you have the helping verb, the subject, and then the main verb. Helping verb, subject, main verb. Helping verb, subject, main verb. Helping verb, subject, main verb. So that's how we form information questions. Does Jean eat lunch at the cafeteria every day? Yes, she does. Where does Jean eat lunch every day? At the cafeteria. Does Peter work at the post office? Oh, where does, where does Pete work at the post office? This one is, does Peter work at the post office? Yes, he does. Uh, do you live in an apartment? Yes, I live in an apartment. Uh, where do you live? In an apartment. Where does Bob eat dinner every night? At a restaurant. Where do you sit in class? In the front row. Uh, where, do you, where does Jessica go to school? At the University of Toronto. Where is my book on, where is your book on my desk? Uh, where do you go every morning to class? Where are the students right now in class? Are, where are kangaroos in Australia? When and what? So when and what asks for information about time. When do you go to class? At 9 o'clock. What time do you go to class? At 9 o'clock. When does Anna eat dinner? At 6 p.m. 
What time does Anna eat dinner at 6 p.m.? What time do you usually go to class? So the frequency adverb usually comes immediately after the subject in a question. So is the question word verb, question word, helping verb, subject, uh, frequency adverb, and then the main verb. So what time does Anna eat dinner? What time do you get up at 6.45? What time does Anna, uh, Maria get up at 6.30? What time does the movie start at 8.15? So this all talks about time. What time does the train leave at 9.05? Between what time and what time do you eat dinner? Between 6.30 and 8. Um, what time do your classes begin at 8.15? What time does the library close at 10 p.m.? So this is pretty, pretty easy. It just talks about time. Then if you're going to ask about what something is or where, so here are more question words. Where is Thailand? Where are your books? When is uh, the concert? What is your name? What time is it? So Thailand is in Southeast Asia. My books are on my desk. The concert is on April 3rd. My name is Yoko. It is 10.30. Where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. What time does the plane arrive? The plane arrives at 6.15. What do monkeys eat? Monkeys eat fruits, plants, and insects. What does Bob study? Bob studies in the evening. So here are more question words. And you have the question word plus do plus subject and main verb. And then for a short question, you have question word plus B plus the subject. This ends chapter three, and I will end this video uh, at the beginning of chapter four. So if you have any questions for chapters 1, 2, and 3, feel free to email me anytime.